it's pretty uh pretty quiet we've got a long we've got a long road coming up to uh episode 300 really but anyways without further ado like i said i'll try and keep up with the chat but if i'm reading all the stuff from the system at the same time i do apologize if i miss any of the comments you guys are putting i'll try and uh cover everything hope you make it to 40k subs thank you Dwayne. appreciate it glad you guys are still coming back and enjoying all the videos i'm from indonesia and very nice happy easter for everyone as well very nice hey nick how's it going right so yeah i haven't i haven't actually made an uh i haven't actually thought of an easter system this year actually i didn't i haven't actually made one i don't i, I don't always do easter it's mainly Christmas and Halloween are sort of the two I really go for. Easter, I guess, isn't... There's less sort of theme into it with the colours and making the objects. So I kind of do skip Easter. I think I did an Easter once before an Easter system. But I've never actually done like done it consistently every year. In Australia, it's 2am. Oh, wow, we Well, I appreciate you tuning in, uh, Golden. I really do. That's that's awesome. What are you doing, Neptune? We're doing episode 300 and checking out all of your guys' systems today. So we've already got the first system up and running. So I think what I'll do is I'll get cracking. Let's get started. So this is the first of the systems. It's looking pretty big from Golden. That's why he's tuned in as well. Probably see his system on the live. Because uh, it's a little different doing it live, really. Unless it's more more casual, in a way, doing the streams live. Disclaimer, do not play this simulation. Oh, I think we'll have to do that at the end, uh, Golden. Now you've asked us not to do it. Um, so... Uh, was the spaceship collab because of me? Um, if that was Mohammed. Um, in a way, you kind of sort of pushed it a bit more because a lot of people were asking for it. But I guess, um, I guess that was the tipping point really when I went, I went out to Chip and I reached out to him saying, "Do you want to do anything together?" And he was interested. So you yeah, we managed to do two of the videos together. I'm hoping to do a third one at some point, but I think he's quite busy at the moment, so it's kind of on hold. But yeah, I definitely would like to do more if he uh, if he's down for it. Which would be really cool because they were they were good fun. Hey, South Phoenix, how's it going? Or, or Phoenix, uh, Mr. Phoenix, how are we doing? Right. Anyways, let's get onto the system. So, disclaimer: Do not play the simulation. Please view every object. Uh, there's a trail color key. So, pink is rocky planets that are not hatable. Green is rocky planets that are hatable. So, we've got a nice load of those. Blue is ice giant. Brown is gas giant. White is minor planets and moons. And then the red doesn't have a description. Okay, so. The star itself, located in UGC 447. This star system is ordinary. However, we shall follow it through life, death, and rebirth. Currently, at 0 0.5 billion years after formation, it is a riveting time to visit. Okay. So, the first of the planets here. How'd you come up with that that word? <laughs> so, this is Insigni. It's the core of a gas dwarf, with scorching temperatures and stellar wind blowing away its gas layers until it reached a hot, tidy lock equivalent where it has and will persist. Cool. It's in Belgium at 7.10pm. Very nice. I visited Belgium last year, MLG. It's a very nice country, actually. I went to some very cool places there. In Brussels as well. Have you been to the Atonium? In... If any... Has anyone been to Belgium? Have you been to the Atonium in Brussels? They, they say it's like their version of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. I tell you what, if you've not been there and you're in Belgium, in Brussels, definitely go to the Atonium. It's really cool. It may look a little interesting on the outside, but once you go inside it to a certain area, it's very, very interesting. Right, so, anyways, the next planet out, we've got Cura, or, or yeah, Cure, Cure is a tiny lot Mercurian world with low mass, warm surface, and many craters. It hosts a single moon, um, which, despite not forming with the planet, has remarkably similar colours and composition. I tell you, that is an interesting colour, isn't it? Let me just get a good look at that. It's like a yellow and pink mix um, there, which is um, pretty interesting. Okay. And then the next of the, the moon here. Very small. Also similar colours. So they're made from the same materials, despite not being originally from this planet. Very interesting stuff. Okay. It's pretty cool. Do you think the mobile version is close to coming out? Um, from what I know, there's no announcement of when it's going to be ready. I think they want it ready this year. Don't know when. I haven't spoken to the um, the dev guys for quite a while. I mean, I haven't spoken. I probably haven't spoken properly since. Um, well, I did obviously the interview of them in the VC in the voice chat. Um, I've had a few casual conversations with them um, after that. But I haven't done anything recently, and I haven't heard anything about the mobile version. Um, I mean, that's going to take a while to do, because you've got to think, Universe Sandbox, it can make your PC very slow. So the fact that you're trying to do that on a mobile device, that's quite a tough, probably quite a tough challenge to get the frame rate right. So, I mean, I'm not sure how well 
balanced that will be. So obviously they're, they're taking the time of it. Because think about it this way. We don't want them to rush it and then it, for it to be like not good. We want them to obviously take their time and have it out. And hopefully it be a fairly non-buggy um, is ideally what, we, we, what we'd want with that. Anyways, next planet here. Let's continue. So we've got Woovy. This is a tidy locked Venusian world. Albedo smaller and cooler. It used to have liquid water on its surface until the runaway greenhouse effect caused it to evaporate only a few million years ago. Although traces of its wet past remain. So there must be a few patches of water maybe hidden here. Not that I can see, but maybe they're under. Maybe the water effect would be underground on that guy. There it is. Okay. Next up, we've got this one here. So this is Yarib. First habitable planet. Very nice uh, pinky purple atmosphere. It's looking good, actually. Kind of like something you see out of Space Engine in some worlds. Um, the first to not be tidy locked. Uh, life has not yet developed here, but may soon due to near-perfect conditions. It hosts a single moon, uh, dr Droggy, which is a which has a dark surface. It's a nice-looking planet. What do you guys think of that? It's pretty nice. Oh, look at those rings. Look at that over there. Just seen it in the back. I only just noticed that in the background. What is that all about? That's quite interesting. Hey, hey, Chip, how's it going, man? How you doing? Good to see you. How are you? How else are we doing? If Universe Sandbox will be available on mobile, it won't be free. No, the, yeah, it, it'll probably be... Um, maybe it'll be a little less than the PC version, but obviously that's obviously up to the devs what they want to put for it. But, I mean, my guess is it'd either be the same or it'd be probably slightly less um, for the mobile edition. J1407B moment. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, you're right, Nick. It definitely is seeing that there. Pretty cool. Right. Anyways, continuing on. So next planet we have now got. So we've done we've done that one. Uh, next up we got Sagna Rhea, which is so that's one here. So it's an asteroid. Oh, now that, uh, it's a binary asteroid system that crosses the orbit of uh, Yarib. Uh, only time and orbital interactions will tell whether they are doomed to collide. So they're, they're the two. There they are. There's so the asteroid. And the first of the asteroid moons. Very nice. Down there, there is a little guy. Looking pretty cool, actually. Very nice. Cool. All right, moving on. So we're going to this guy now. So Nai Nai what Nai Woya is a super F that hosts two moons. Also oh, pretty nice. Uh, I like the purple theme in again with the atmosphere. That deep blue purple almost look. It does look good. Um, the first signs of life have been detected by our advanced programming. So perhaps this may become like an Earth 2.0 in a not so far future. Excellent. And we've got uh, two moons. That one's really exotic coloured. And then we've also got this one here. Cool. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Again, guys, I do apologise if I can't keep up with all the comments. There's a lot going on here, and I've also got the reading on the uh, on the game to do as well, so I do apologise. If I don't reply, just post it again, and hopefully I'll see it. Um, next planet, we've got uh, Shiana. It's a primarily ocean world with basic microbial life, hence the teal water. Oh, that's... Oh, okay. Nice. It hosts two moons, Dem and Merb. So let's just get them up on the uh, side camera here, just so we can see them a little easier. There we go. How are we doing in the chat? Really nice system so far. It is. It is. Will you ever make a No Man's Sky series? A lot of people have asked that. I haven't... Honestly, I haven't got around to really looking into it, if I'm if I'm perfectly honest. Because I work full-time during the week. So I only have the weekends to curate videos. So it's quite difficult to obviously do some research to get the things installed and then like, look into it and all do that. But, you know, uh, it's, it's not out of the question, uh, Mohammed. It, it's, it could be done. It definitely could be done. For sure. But, yeah, it's just It's just time. I mean, I'm starting a new job soon as well. So, yeah, I've got times. Time is uh, quite a task at the moment to get a lot of spare time on the weekends. Obviously, the weekends, apart from doing videos, it's also my time to sort of relax in the, it, on the weekend as well. So, yeah, time can be a bit of a problem sometimes. But, you know, I still get the videos done. I mean, I've been doing, I've been going strong for years now while working full time um, at the same time. But it's, it's, it is quite a challenge, I have to say. But, you know, it is, it is doable. Hey, I shoot. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good, thank you. How are you? What is your favourite colour out of the ten in the alphabet? What do you mean ten in the alphabet? Colour, favourite colour? Well, my favourite colour would be yellow or blue, personally. Yeah, Dwayne, shoot the question, man. How do you even come up with these names? See, that's what I want to know. <laughs> how do, how do, these Some of these names, they're pretty mad, aren't they? It's just, uh, you make a whole language out of all these. Um, right, anyways, next up we have got crossing the first asteroid belt. 
Um, we arrive at the first ice giant. So this is Ar Arendasus. It hosts five moons. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Cool. Here we go. Oh, it's tilted on its side, kind of like a Uranus theme. This is one of the ice giants. Remember. So let's have a look at the moons. They're all fairly minor by the looks of things. Okay, we've got two larger ones on the outer regions. Very Uranus-y uh, looking as well. My favourite colour is yellow too. Very nice. Yeah, but for me it always has been. It just it just stands out because of how bright it is, you know. I've, and obviously I like my cars. So a yellow car, it really does stand out from the field. Especially if it's a nice you know, Lamborghini or something, which is really cool. This is my first Neptunian guy stream I'm watching and it's fire. Oh, well, I'm glad you enjoy, Hayes. Appreciate it. Really, really do appreciate it. It's always nice. And it's, it's, it's nice to do um, a more sort of sat down chat with all you guys as well, because obviously across the video to comment communication, it's a little harder. But, you know, when you're actually doing the stream, it, it's a lot more sort of, I guess, personal in a way. You can really sort of have a nice just I, I like a good chat anyway, if I'm honest. So it's, it's, it's always nice to have a good chat, you guys, just about other stuff while we're doing sort of the thing focus on stream as well. It's always good. And just obviously answer your questions as well. And I'll see if you, you I've got any questions to some of you guys. I can communicate you with you directly if I'm viewing your system and things like that. So it's pretty, it's, it's cool actually. It's a different, it's a different pace to doing a video normally, really. So it, it, it's pretty cool. Um, right. So next up, we've got Unic, or known as Unic. It's a Saturn, so it's a Saturn-like gas giant here. It's got some rings as well. Still got that big ring in the background. I'm very keen to see what that's all about. Um, a gas giant with a set of rings almost being identical to its soul system counterpart. So very similar to our own Saturn there. See, the colours are very similar as well. Composition size, uh, what was that in Earth? About 50. So it's a little less massive than Saturn. Saturn's about 59, isn't it? 58, 59 masses of Earth. So a little less than Saturn there. Okay. Pretty cool. Hello, Neptunian guy. How you doing, Cuddly? How's it going? Is that a big ring asteroid on the other belt? It is something. We're going to get to it, but it's, it's something looking pretty big. So we've got another asteroid belt now. So now it's saying, crossing another belt, we find ourselves at El Elor, the dominant planet orbiting uh, Zeon. It hosts seven moons with um, one and two heaven atmospheres. And this is one thing. I was actually filming a video earlier, because I've, I've already filmed episode 301 um, of this series. I did one of your ones, Phoenix, um, or South Phoenix. Um, I've done yours. I filmed that earlier, so that's episode 301. That'll come out later this week, probably around Thursday. And one thing I said in that, and I've just noticed it here, dominant gas giant, that's kind of a term I kind of sort of started saying. Now everyone's saying it. It's quite good, actually. I've had that little sort of... Now, now everyone's just doing it. So obviously that originally came from like my Birth to Death series, but you know I just started saying, oh, the dominant gas giant of this system. Now it's, everyone's starting to like, crop up using the word. I find that quite cool, actually, that you know everyone's um, starting to say that, actually. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, right, anyways, the moons. Let's have a quick a brief. We'll just make this bigger so we can actually get a good view of them as well. Saves us having to travel to them all. So, there they all are there. Oh, I do like the blue one. We'll get a closer look at the blue one, though. Of in the point of interest. That is a very nice... So, it's a deep blue with a light sort of cyan blue atmosphere. Or cl clouds, I should say. Quite like that. That does look good, doesn't it? That's really cool. Got uh, number three over there. Four, five. And then that's, that's seven. Where's six? Oh, there we go. There's six. So it goes six, then five, because five cuts in. Okay. That one's a small little asteroid. Look, that's tiny, actually. Pretty cool, though. Hey. Nice. Okay, so there's those guys. So crossing another belt, we find ourselves at... Uh, so we've done Elwall, haven't we? Yeah, so crossing the final belt, we're now at Jane. Oh, I actually said that one correct. Jane. Or Jane. Jane. And... Uh, Epimet with a combined total mass of 45 Earth masses. They shape the outskirts of the system. Oh, look at those. Oh, they're massive binary. Okay. Two very different gas giants. Very close together, but made of obviously different elements being different colours. So completely different uh, compositions. That's pretty cool. Saturn is looking at those rings with distance and fear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to be seeing what that's all about. I mean, you're one of the staples of the Universe Science community, so everyone is going to catch. Yeah, and I guess so. Because obviously, I've probably have quite a. Over the years, I mean. I've probably done more Universe Sandbox than anyone else on YouTube, um, if I'm honest. I mean, I must have done... I mean, I've done over a thousand videos now, haven't I? So, I've, I've probably done... <laughs> I'm, I'm an old... I'm a very old timer on Universe Sandbox now. I mean, I started in 20... So, I started in 2015, but didn't start making YouTube till 2016. 
so I had I, I had Sandbox about a year before I really started before I started doing YouTube um, in August of 2016. So now I've I've been around for some time now. I mean I'm getting up to the um, eight year anniversary on YouTube this year. That's absolutely crazy. Eight years since um, 2016 when I started that. So it's yeah, that's pretty crazy, really. I mean, I'm, I'm a real old timer now on even on YouTube. I mean, eight years. I mean, that's a decent run, really, on eight years. I mean, that's pretty mad. I mean, I started YouTube when I was um. I started YouTube when I came out of school. Luckily, though, I, my voice was never squeaky, I guess, when I started YouTube. But um, it's, it's interesting to go back, really, and see how 16-year-old me sort of looked like when I started uh, making the channel. So it's, it's pretty cool. Right, moving on. So where are we going? So that's that. Look, so that, that has its own... It's like a... Um, I think this is like an Oort cloud sort of thing, the massive uh, period of... Uh, asteroids around it so i'm guessing that's what this is over here this must be like a little orc cloud kind of thing okay so passing through the cometary cloud there you go okay so it is like an orc cloud we reach the stellar companion 4m it's under the mass required to evolve to a red giant after exhausting its hydrogen fuel so we will instead become a blue dwarf um which contrary to popular belief do not turn visibly blue and instead more white so temperatures are not much higher than sol so the sun so it's about 5700 kelvin so what is it temperature wise it is 3100 that's a lot cooler than the sun is at the moment okay so there it is in the middle looking good what is the distance from the sun to earth in kilometers is it a hundred and oh. what's about one au it's about 100 and i know it's in miles it's about nine is it 90 million miles i'm not sure what it is in kilometers i think it's about 150,000 kilometers Earth and the Sun. It's pretty cool. Um, my computer can't even handle half of that. <laughs> your voice wasn't squeaky, but your microphone... Oh, yeah, the old mic. Yes, remember the old mic. Oh, my God. There were some videos that I actually took down because the audio is so bad. And they, some of them had, like, 20... I don't know, 20,000 plus views. And, like, half of the comments on that dreaded video were, like... The old, like, talking about the old, and I was like, oh my god, this video needs to go. I think I really later really released it as like a, I think I tried to fix the audio of editing, did a bit of an audio fix for it. Uh, I think it's back up now, but yeah, it's, um, <laughs> that, that, those old ones were pretty, uh, pretty mad. Oh, so it's 150 million kilometers. I was right then, okay. 96 million miles. Yeah, 90, I said 90, didn't I? Ah, not far off. Close enough. You and Anton uh, Petrov. Oh, yes, I remember Anton. Yeah, you, I, I, phew, wow, we, I, I saw a video from him years and years ago. I think that's where I first saw Universe Sandbox. It was either, it was either that or Markiplier's video on it a long, long time ago. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I remember watching his stuff years and years ago. Yeah, he's, he's a cool. He, he did some really good. I think he was a teacher as well, so he, he was like, really on his stuff. He was, he was really good. I liked his stuff because it was really, really in detail, which is really cool. You know how big the universe is? Well, the observable universe is 93 billion um, billion kilometres in radius, isn't it? So that's as far as we know the observable universe. We don't know the scale of the actual universe. So, I mean, none of us can really answer that question. But the observable is about 93 billion um, kilometres in radius, isn't it? So about 100, almost 150,000 in diameter. So 93 billion in radius, so that's from the middle to the edge. But that's as far as we can see, because we don't know how much further the universe is past the observable universe, so keep that in mind. But it's pretty cool. In light years. Yeah, light years, not kilometres. <laughs> in light years, yeah. That's um, that's a big difference. Right, anyways, back to the system. Let's continue. So, first of the planets. Let's uh, scroll down. So this is Messenger. It is tidy locked Mercurian world, albedo more than 10 times the mass. Okay. Oh, albeat, sorry. Uh, next up, we've got Dol Nua. Tidy Lock Super Earth. Not much else to say. You can see it's pretty scorched looking. Yeah, it's not uh, looking like the nicest place to visit. Uh, next up, we've got this guy here. Lu Lugana Lugorba. It's a lacustine planet that takes... Oh, look at the massive... Look at that behind us now, the Oort Cloud there. That's pretty cool. It's a ni this is a nice looking planet. Uh, microbial life has already developed in part thanks to volcanic activity which is fueled by the moon ah, kind of like io in a way you know shooting stuff out brushing on jupiter's magnetic field that's what io would sort of do okay cool next up we have got this one here n eve is a martian planet with two moons nicknamed yin and yang by our expert scientists due to one reflecting almost no light and the other reflecting most okay which plays into the light and dark aspects of yin yang ah, okay so there's that i'm guessing that's the light one 
And then the dark one, I'm guessing, is a black coal-like object. You know, like Uranus's rings, they're really dark, aren't they? So, probably the same sort of material as that. Okay. Cool. Very nice. Very, very cool. All right, okay. Oh, yeah, South Phoenix. I've got something planned. Wait and see, my friend. <laughs> right, next up, we've got um, this one here. So, one med. It's a solitary, gas, a solitary ice giant, which is unusual, as the giant planets typically have a moon or ring system, or at least one or two. Cool. So, no moons and no rings. So, kind of a rogue planet there. Next up, we've got this one here. Gnorha. It's an ice giant with a planetary mass moon, although it isn't substantial enough to become a binary. Still a fairly sized object there. Quite a nice looking one with the atmosphere on it as well. Looking cool. Right, now we are going to an asteroid belt. So we've got this one here. Nestled in between Forms Asteroid Belt and uh, the commentary cloud, so the Orc cloud thing, is uh, Tattle, the dominant planet of Forum, which hosts a relatively boring moon system. Okay. Oh, there we go. So kind of tilted on its side again. Come like Uranus kind of vibes. There's the list of moons on the side there. Looking good. Very nice. As we, and then that's it. So, as we pass out of the cometary cloud and into the surface, place, we must wonder what await, or what next awaits for this system. Is there any secret hidden out? I quite like it when people put secrets quite far up, but it looks like that is it. So, that is the first system. So, it's called the uh, Systematic Fool Part 1. So, that means that ideally, Mr. Golden AU, so he's the creator of the system, he's going to send a Part 2 in for the next simulation upload. So, I'll, oh, I'll watch this one with great interest. So, cool. So that's our first system of the day done. So let's mark that off in the Discord as we continue now. So, how are we doing here? So there we go. There's that one done. Looking good. Very nice. Okay, next up we have got Nicker Bean system. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Cool. So this is the Halo Star system. Okay, let's get that up and running. So straight into the next system. Rolling right into it. There we go. Let's do this. Cool. All right. Um, let's go. Can we go back? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, we need to go to the uh, universe sandbox. There we go. Oh, I need to go back to the main. Ah, it's annoying when the workshop does this. Sometimes it just takes me back to the page I was on, but this time I've got to go all the way to the. Uh... Always forget where it is, and I'm being watched, so I'm a lot slower. Ah, I don't know where to go. <laughs> There, there he is. That's the button I'm looking for. Right. And then Universe Sandbox. There we go. Hey, there you go. That's all we need. And then we paste it in there. That's good. Right. Here it is. Next system up. Cool. So this is Nick of Beans. Right. Here we go. Let's get that installed. Very nice. How are we doing in the chat? How are we doing? Can I ask you another question? Yeah, don't need to ask. Strange. Just hit me. Whatever you need. Neptune man, do you want to see my Muin powers? <laughs> Please say yes. So I've read what you said. So there you go. Um, has Neptune made a galaxy with a bunch of planetary systems, rogue planets and stuff? Long, long ago, there was a system called Subscribers Universe where you guys would submit suggestions to me to make planets. And I did it for like 15, 20 episodes. And then once that was all done, I'd pull it all into a galaxy size simulation. It's ages, it years and years ago. That one took a lot of work. But yeah, I made like an entire galaxy um, size system. That was a, that was crazy, that was. I have something else planned for my next system, but after doing there'll be part two. So that's for the system we just done. Cool. How big is J1407B's rings? They're 60% the size of Earth's orbits. They're 0 0.6 AU in size, roughly. So pretty, they're a pretty big deal, and they are pretty amazing. Right. Next system here. So there we go. Cool. Neptunian guy, for when you get to my simulation, unfortunately, you'll have to use an old version in case you do it here. I'll have to do that in a separate episode, Nick, because I don't want to have to uninstall the game and reinstall it when I'm streaming, because that'll take time. So I'll have to skip it in that case. Um, and I'll have to do it for episode 302 in that case, unfortunately. So I do apologise for that. Uh, next up, we've got Halo Star System Ancient. Um, a star born about 1 billion years ago. Um, watches up upon its newborn and unstable system. Planets are taking forms and nothing will stay the same forever. Uh, this is like a birth to death system in a way then. Okay. Cool. 
So the first of the planets, we got Perto here. Oh, hello. Oh, I'm liking it already. We got some interesting stuff in here. Okay. Now that's uh, that's been modded, hasn't it? That's definitely not normal. Are they clouds? They're not clouds. Is that ice or snow? Liquid? Interesting. Okay, that's got some sort of modded color on it. Then that that's a little brighter than a normal object should be. Okay. The object suffered three simultaneous collisions with objects around the size of Mercury that absolutely shredded its surface and about half the matter of the three were thrown into space due to sheer amount of force. Now the planet burns in huge oceans of lava and scorching land. Interesting. 341 degrees there. Okay. Very nice. Cool. Uh, next up we have got... Der Samoni. The second planet of Halo, the hot Selena is nothing but a scorching dead landscape filled with enormous craters that carry on the planet's chaotic past. It has a very unstable orbit with its um, a pompous almost reaching crevice orbital plane. So it's got a eccentric orbit. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Speaking of the crevice, this is the next object. Oh, I'm liking the clouds. Very intense clouds on there. Okay. The third planet of Halo, it is about... What is one of the methane worlds with about twice the gravity of Earth being extremely dense, the planet has the atmosphere composition of mostly methane and carbon dioxide with matrix atmosphere yellowish and the presence of liquid oxygen on its surface. The hot temperatures cause a quick evaporation of water resulting in fast clouds. Okay, looking good. Very, it's, That's been modded. You can see it's definitely brighter than it normally would be, I think. I like the backgrounds increase as well. He's made these gone for the light Milky Way background. I don't see many people use this background, actually. And then the moon as well. Uh, Zal would be the only moon, thought to be a captured moon, previously adjacent to Der Salmoni, uh, that was flung on the very end and captured. Okay, immense gravity pull. Nice. Cool. Oh, wow, we've got a bit of a... High member of the species, Homo sapiens, that has some relation that makes you belong to Neptune. Please don't spam the chat. I was enough to, unfortunately, uh, put the mute thing on there. I don't want to, but... Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to spam the chat because it'll get annoying for everyone else. Um, Watcher, the fourth planet of uh, Hilo. The planet is slightly locked to its parent with one part facing the star permanently. Um, all material is central to life, however. On its dark side, its face is being frozen, unable to spread across the, uh, the atmosphere and land. Its atmosphere is roughly 50% nitrogen and 50% CO2, being a toxic atmosphere for any organic matter. So you can see it's pretty frozen up, actually. Yeah, Check that out. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Love the colours in this one. Yeah, there's a very nice, very nice colour list, isn't there? It's just cool. How big is VUI Canis Majoris? This was about 7.95 AU, isn't it, in radius? Or, for comparison, <laughs> we can look at it right now. VUI Canis. Very cool star name. There it is. 6.6 .6 AU, not 7. So that's one off there. 6.6. .6. Um, next up, we got Telus here. The fifth planet. It is a planet. Oh, well, oh, wow. We, oh, that's a beautiful picture there. Look at that. It's just turned off all the HUD and stuff. Look at that. What a view that is. It's got an eclipse going on as well. Check that out. What do you think of that? That's a great, look at that. That's a great image. Very nice. That's really cool. Cool. Uh, that's, that's a beauty. That's an absolute beauty, that is. Okay. Obviously, not for the colours, but just the way it's been visually represented. Obviously, the colours are obviously greys, browns, and all that. But, you know, just the way it's visually been represented with the eclipse, the rings. It's such a great-looking combination there. It's very, very cool. Uh, so, this is Telus. It is, isn't it? That's Telus, yeah. Uh, the fifth planet. It is a planet that suffered a massive collision with the remaining being a massive, the remaining being a massive moon in between debris that now form a ring. Its atmosphere is roughly 6% CO2, 20% methane, 20% H2O. And some small patches of oxygen on the South Poles. This composition makes um, it one of the methane worlds. The planet has a very weak magnetic field. And then I'm guessing the moon is called Lum. It's very close. I mean, that, I'm sure Roosh Limit would have a bit of a... Start tearing bits away after a long period of time. Lum is a moon born from the old collision between a protoplanet and Tellus. It has a very thin atmosphere, mostly made in nitrogen. And the entire surface is covered by particles of both water and CO2 mixed. Okay. Next up, we've got Poster, so we leave that awesome world behind. We're now heading there. Here it is. Okay. Looking great. 
That's cool. Imagine the tidal flex. Yeah, the tidal forces would be pretty brutal for sure there. Rouge limit, am I a joke? Exactly, Paulina. Exactly. That's going to be a... Yeah, that's going to shred that moon eventually. And obviously the tidal effects. So imagine the wet, the sea, the waves of the ocean, how big the tidal waves would be having that moon brush on your gravity. You know, <laughs> that's a huge tidal force there. That is brutal. Absolutely brutal. I mean, that essentially depending on how massive the object is. Right, anyways, next up. So this is poster. The sixth planet of Halo. The object is an ammonia world with two medium-sized moons. Both can be uh, seen easy due to the reflective uh, think atmosphere. Early bacteria life forms have already been detected in the cold ammonia oceans, being very different from the usual life forms we see in paradise planets. Okay. Um, then we've got desolate as the moon, which is that one. Okay. This desert moon... Uh, has a crater-filled surface with a very thin layer of argon composed in its atmosphere and liquid argon underground. And then we have the next moon that is Cario over here. The last and furthest moon of Posa. The object is nitrogen-rich, being entire atmosphere and having frozen nitrogen dioxide on its poles, as well as frozen water covering its surface. Very nice. Okay. A surfer's dream. Exactly. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> cool, Cario. Alrighty. Next up, we've got Mole. We've got Mole and Molly. Okay, <laughs> that's a bit unrealistic. You press play. They are going in. They are colliding when you press play there. Oh, that is a... We're, we're going to need to press play for that, surely, at the end. They, they, there's no way that they don't collide. Surely they're going into each other there. The two Barney Asteroids dancing around in many... We're going to do it now. It's got. They're going to go. they got to. Surely. Uh, I... There's no way that that functions. That is the Roosh limit. The gravity would shred that thing in reality. There's no way that that actually functions. I am very surprised that the game is functioning that. I thought they would have gone into each other, if I'm honest. They, they should have gone. There's no way. I, I'm very surprised. I mean, that's just ridiculous how close that is. I mean, let's have a look at his stats. 49 kilometers away. It takes three hours to go around. No way that doesn't get pulled in or something. <laughs> that's that's madness. Surely that defies all physics. Sure, that would crash. I mean, let's do a bit of a manual intervention. We're going to slowly... Yeah, there you go. As soon as I shrink it once, it goes in. <laughs> oh, they broke apart. Look, there you go. Oi. Yeah, hang on a minute. They got they, they got a collide. They sure, there's no way they wouldn't. They would have to go into each other. A bit of, you know, surely you get this. There you go. That's more like it. Yeah, there's something like that. That makes more sense. <laughs> that definitely would go in. There you go. There's all the debris. Of it. Yeah. Sorry, I broke your system. <laughs> it's just no way. That that would have crashed. <laughs> no, that's madness. Next up, we have got... Oh, hello. Oh, whoops. I think pressing play has done some bad things. Let's reopen the sim. <laughs> whoops. Uh, we're in this system, aren't we? Yeah. Let's go again. They would make, they would, yeah, they'd make a bigger, they'd make a bigger planet or bigger asteroid when they combine like that. All right, so here we go. There's its rings back. Cool. So Armo, the seventh planet, the closest um, gas giant to its parent, was pushed by gravitational force of the star um, emerging matter, causing it and other gas giants to be pushed away. Its atmosphere is mostly made of hydrogen with a core made of frozen ammonia and a rocky core. Got a nice little ring system there. The bands look pretty cool as well. I do quite like that. Looks clean. Looking good. Next up, we've got Sass over here. The first moon of Armo. And then it's Sass. Sass is the closest moon with the prettiest view of Armo. Let's have a look. That's quite a nice view. Let's have a little look down here. On the surface view. Have a little look around. There he is in the sky. Looking pretty cool. See the rings as well in the sky. Nice. Cool. Uh, an atmosphere full of oxygen and thinner volumes of SO2 and CO2. It has particles of frozen SO2 and water spread around its surface. Next up we've got Jig. Over here. The second moon of Armo. Jig's surface is very hot, even being far away from its parent star. The moon has an atmosphere pressure of 80 atmospheres, being majority uh, composed of CO2 and SO2. There's a presence of clouds and dust as a year, or yearly, a planet-wide dust storm ravages the surface and lasts for about a month. It's pretty, kind of like Mars with the old dust storms. Now. That's pretty cool. Cool. Cool, cool. 
Please do more surface views. Yeah, we can try and get in there for any interesting views. We can have a can have one from this planet actually, this moon. Let's have a little look here. Land on the north. Have a little look around. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oops, not really the best view there. Let's go a little more. Let's try and go there. That's better. Have a look around. Look in the sky. You can see it there in the faint, faint uh, sunlight. There you go. Obviously the star is over there. And there's your planet. Cool. That's a nice looking planet. I quite like that one. So that's Jig. The uh, second moon, its surface is very hot, uh, even being far away from its parent star. The moon has atmosphere pressure of 80 atmospheres, being majority composed of CO2 and SO2. There's a presence of clouds of dust. Oh, yeah, we already read that, didn't we? Um, next up, we got Lav, which is that one. Was that low? Hang on, where's, where's the one we're looking for? Lav, here it is. Cool. The two-tone is nice. Yeah, I like that. That's a cool view of the planet behind. So that's Lyav. Uh, is that any description of that? The third moon it is an ammonia-rich world with an almost invisible atmosphere of such material. Since all the material is frozen, liquid ammonia can only be found in deep abyss of the planet closer to the mantle. Next up, we've got Low over here. The fourth moon of Armo. It's a fast spin object that suffered a collision not long ago, giving the moon its own smaller moon. Nice. Next up, we've got Namaka over... Where, where's that? Uh, low... Um, oh, that's the moon. Uh, so, it is anything that orbits the moon, there's anything cooler than that. Uh, next up, we've got Peeve over here. Pinky. Very pink. Okay. Cool. So, it has a, one of the densest atmospheres and a low gravity. The combination of those factors can make one of the heaviest objects barely float on the planet's surface. It has oceans of sulfur and carbon dioxide flying on its surface, but hidden beneath the methane and helium clouds. Very cool. Okay. Next up, we've got your Euroga over here. The sixth and last moon of Armo. This was the catalyst for the collision with Lo, which originated on its moon Namaka. Olga still has a temperature of over 300 degrees from the collision. All right, next up, moving on to the next planet. But let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Let me just go out to the next one. So we're heading to Armonia next. Armonia? So there's the view of the next gas giant. Looking good. All right, how are we doing in the chat? Um, Titan, but pink and built different. Yeah, in a way, yeah. That one had helium on it, though, didn't it? Tiny Venus-Mars hybrid. How did the universe begin? Well, that's a question as old as time, really, there, Dwayne. I mean, it's up to interpretation, really. Was it the Big Bang? That's the obviously the most known theory, you know? It's an interesting question, but obviously no one can really answer that. But the Big Bang is probably the highest suggested answer there. Will there be a video or is it live only? Well, the, the, the stream will stay as a video after I do the stream. But I mean, I could re-upload the stream as separate episodes if you guys want. I mean, it's up to you. Do you want to see that? Do we need them as separate episodes or do you want, should I just do it all in one big episode? I mean, it's entirely entirely up to you guys i can try and split them in separate episodes um but if you guys want that i mean i'll put the question out in the discord after as well but i mean if you should i do that to split the systems up so then you can find them easier in the future if you want to go back i mean let me know should, should i do that then g if you're okay of answering this what is your other job so well my only job is really my full-time job youtube is more of a you know of a hobby thing i wouldn't really class it as a job it's, it's just a hobby really i mean, just do it on the weekends uh, my main job i'm just an administrator nothing exciting I, I do customer service but i'm actually changing jobs to a marketing role soon um at a different business which i'm quite looking forward to actually so it should be should be pretty cool um yeah one large episode one big episode so you want it as one big episode not as a uh, not a separate so for every system i do in this stream i could have that as a separate upload should i do that or do we just want it as an individual big episode let me know down below or let me know in the in the chat really good luck with your new job thank you very much golden appreciate it i'll start that in a few weeks actually so still doing my old job uh, for the time being so we want it as one large episode not as uh separate videos the ultimate episode well, if you, one big so everyone's saying one big episode. Oh, well, we'll do it as one big episode. So, so I'll re-up. Well, the, once the stream's done, I'll upload the episode as an individual video. Then you can also go back and uh, check that out. Cool. Right, uh, onto this planet, though. Let's continue. So, uh, the eighth planet of Halo. Uh, oh, Halo, sorry. Um, it's a gas giant with patches of ammonia running on a visible atmosphere. So, so there's the ammonia patches there. Cool. 
with uh, dense clouds of helium and hydrogen. So first up, we've got Ridge, the first moon. Uh, the most unique aspect of this planet is the planetary ridge that does a full circle. Kind of reminds me of Miranda around Uranus with the ridges and things like that. Pretty cool. It was formed due to the proximity to the parent. Next up, we got Youth, the second moon. It is by appearance a rather hassle world. However, it's clearly not. Its temperatures reach below 200, minus 200 um, as it permits the existence of flowing oceans of liquid nitrogen. As it uh, rapidly evaporates into air, creating a similar cycle to the water cycle, it's an awesome view of the parent planet. Oh, we'll have a look at that. Uh, what I'm going to do is, though, we're going to move it in its orbit round. So I'm going to do this. And we're going to view it from the face. We're going to put it there. Now we have a view from behind. So I'm going to land, say, here. We wanted more surface views, so here we go. So there is the view of your parent planet. And another moon in the shot as well. Check that out. What do you think of that? Let's turn this all off. Oh, hang on. Can we turn it off? Turn the HUD off. Oi. I don't think that's really worked. There you go, that works. So that's a, sort of the view you'd get. I mean, I can try and... I've kind of lost where the moon is. I've disconnected from the moon's orbit. There it is. We can try and... Uh, trying to line up with the moon now. That's not going to be easy. I've kind of lost it. <laughs> but what we can do is do this. Just use manual control. Uh, there's the moon. Land on the moon manually. And there, there you go. There's a view of the... View of the parent from the moon. There you go. Cool. Very nice. You can see the Andromeda galaxy in the background there if you look carefully. If you look down behind the gas giant there, you can see the Andromeda galaxy just there. Pretty cool. Right, uh, next up. So, where are we? So, labels on. Next up, we've got uh, Nick Nickwin. The third moon. Thought to have the same origin as Yuff. Um, it's a moon of very low density and less albedo, intensifying the vaporization of liquid nitrogen below the dense clouds. Uh, a surface size completely covered by... Oh, wow, we... Uh, completely by nitrogen. It has a very unstable orbit due to its low mass and proximity to two massive moons. Makes sense. Do you want me to make a blue system for you, Neptune guy? It's entirely up to you, Graham, really. I mean, the submission chat in the Discord will open soon, so stay tuned for that. There'll be an announcement in the Discord about it. And when that chat's open, upload whatever you fancy. As long as it meets the regulation rules that will be uh, made clear before the upload process starts um, as well. US is far more interested in someone talking out their thoughts and reactions to the sim. Thanks for uh, being awesome at that. It brings US to a new level. Yeah, it's, it's thank, thank you. I appreciate your feedback. I mean, it's, it's good, really, because it's a great game to share and, and you know, show people. So it's, it, that, I mean, that's obviously why this series has come so far. We're on episode 300. That's my biggest series by a long time. I've been doing it since the start, really. I've been doing it since probably, I think, 2017. I first did it. So it's been a long time. I've done so many of these. Um, but obviously, you guys have always enjoyed it. I enjoy it. So why not? You know, just keep doing it. You know, it's good. Um, but yeah, it's um, it, it is good. I think I think you're right, uh, Randall, about that. You know, it really does sort of give a little more to the game, and you know, it keeps it fresh. It makes you know people. You know, it, with the object competitions, it brings a bit of competition that makes people thrive to make the most interesting objects when we've done those. But obviously, the systems as well. You know, they're um, they're pretty cool. Um, to check out, you know, of all the different objects that people can include. And I like the story themed ones where people put like a hidden backstory or there's like a an alien species or there's like a hidden ship at the edge of the map or something. You know, people put hidden uh, hidden objects really far away sometimes, which is always really cool. I mean, I do I did it in my system. I think I sent to Chip, didn't I? I think I did it in one of those, um, which is really cool. Uh, moving on. Uh, we've got Hazard here. I'm just trying to keep a balance of the chat and the game at the same time. What is going on here? We've got a glitchy... It's a glitcher. That atmosphere is all over the place. Is that? Oh my! What is this? Hang on a minute. What am I supposed to? I'm trying to click. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, I've turned something off. Ah. Oh. Oh, that's proper like broken. You guys seeing this? What is that? Is it doing for everything? Yes, you can see things here are glitching. Look. Oh my god. Oh, that's we're paused as well. That's weird. Look at the map. The te oh, that's so weird. Oh, that is a truly strange. Uh, <laughs> so the fourth moon, it's rather big for me, but its density is below in size format, making it low gravity. Its house is mostly made of argon and methane, which lakes are made of argon too. On its poles, there's a presence of frozen sulfur dioxide. That's a strange world. What is going on there? Oh, dear. It's a little glitch by the looks of things. Uh, next up, we've got this one here. Okay. Oh, that's madness, though. What is that all about? 
Oh dear. That is very strange. <laughs> I've not seen that glitch before, and I have seen a lot of glitches. Goodbye, and I hope you all enjoy the streams. Cheers for tuning in, Stella, Mike. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. I didn't do anything, Nick, I promise. I just selected it, and it did that. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Oh, that was uh, that was strange. That was really weird. I'm not sure what that's all about. Yeah, Nick, you got any ideas? Did that do it when you made the system? That, that's strange, dude. I don't know. Um, that's Silas. What's going to be with this one? The fifth and last moon of uh, Aromia. Uh, uh, Aromia. Uh, I've completely lost it, Sam. Uh, is a very small moon with an extremely thin atmosphere made of particles and both salt oxide. With frozen patches of water, CO2 and SO2 spread through the surface of snow and ice. Cool. Right, and then moving on to, I think, the finale of the system. Okay, we've got a few more. So we've got Shivenus. The furthest planet from Halo and Ice Giant. There it is. Nice looking Ice Giant as well. And it's got one moon called Drydon. The only moon, it is a planet which is extremely dark at all times and mostly because of the distance it has from the parent star, having temperatures about minus 216 at the equator. At both its poles, there are huge patches of frozen nitrogen, uh, while one huge lake of niche nitrogen slowly freezes at the south of the moon. So there's that. That's all the stuff done. But there's more objects to check out. So we still have this one. We've got Halo over here. Hidden Dwarf Planet, maybe? Pluto and Charon vibes from those two, that's for sure. There's both of those guys. And then lastly, one more object at the end. we got weight. There it is. So there it is. Cool. There you go. Cool. And that is everything. No hidden secrets at the end. Oh! Oh, hang on. What's that then? What is that? That's why you always zoom out when you do one of these. The draw. What is that? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> what have we got here then? What's this all about? What is that? Okay. So, catalyst. Gas giant. 1,100 degrees. It looks pretty cool. It's got a lot of bands on it. Let's see what it looks like underneath that temperature. Quite a nice looking gas giant, actually. Look at that. There you go. So that's meant to be at 1,000 degrees. So there you go. And then laugh at red star looks menacing. Hope too. What is this? What is that? Whoa. Now that looks pretty interesting. Oh, that has got some bodded city lights on it for sure. Now that is very strange. <laughs> what is that all about? Oh dear. Interesting. So there we go. That's the draw. Hidden star at the edge of the system there. Very cool. Okay, so that is that system done from Nick and Bean. Appreciate it. That was a good one. Did like that. Very, very nice. That's cool. Cool. Okay, what have we got next? Someone's pinging me in Discord. What are they saying? What's this? Um, oh, oh, that's just Nick. Okay. Oh, oh, Golden. Sorry. Right. Nice. Right. What's next? So next system loading up. We have got one. Oh, there's one we have to skip there, unfortunately. It's not met the regulations. We got one from a guy called uh, Demunic. I don't think this is the original, though. This is a guy using the same name as Demunic, who we know from the competitions. Oh, he's called Demon. Yeah, he's, his name's spelt with one less O. Okay, well, let's see what he's got for us. Um, let's get that in there. Just post on that as well. Right, so. Let's see what we've got here. So this system is called the San Solio system. Okay, how many how many have we got to do? Because we're definitely clear that we're definitely clear in the list. So we've got this one, we've got one from Nick. And we've got one after him. We've got two after him. So we've got three more after this system. So we're definitely getting that list clear today. That's great stuff. And then I'll have the uploads open probably in a I'll probably open them tomorrow, I guess, maybe. We'll see how we do. Um pretty cool. Get rid of imposter demonic. Yeah, we need to. <laughs> we know it's not the real one because he's got um, he's he's not got the helper role. All right, can we go back? Yeah, here we go. So we can go back this time. Right. So the next system loading up. So this is from. Oh, this is demonic three one three. There we go. So I remember this the ISS model that was cool. This is a quick side note. This is what Mad Panic guy made ages ago. Remember this? This was really cool. This was this was a custom curation of different stuff. That was really cool. We use all different modules and shapes. Remember my planet guy made this? This was really cool. That's always I've always saved it. It's just 
I wish I could use it in the size comparisons, but it doesn't scale up with everything else correctly. But yeah, that is cool, that is. Kept that as a little memento of the past there. Um, next system. Uh, where are we? So. Where, where, what was it called? It was the. There it is. It's the. Oh, wait, wait, there we go. The San Solio system. So here we go. So this is made from a, a user called Demonic. But not the Demonic we know. <laughs> so. Okay. Interesting stuff there. Okay. Right. Here we go. Oh, wow. Okay. How are we doing in the chat as well? Who bro thinks he is? Death not Demonic. Yeah, yeah, because he's not got the uh, same um, role. Because, obviously, the Demonic we know from the competitions, he's a helper in the Discord now. But this guy is a... Um, he's just got the default role. So, that's interesting. <laughs> Imposter. <laughs> so... There you go. Where's the Moonic? I think he's on. Is he on live? Oh, he is online on Discord. I'm not sure if he's watching. I let you know. Are you there? Let us know. We've got an imposter for you. <laughs> so, all right, cool. Right, where are we? So, note the simulation can't be run for short interviews, but it will decay after a few years of runtime. Also, for some objects, have hard to say names, so we'll try and help. Okay, right, <laughs> right. Where are we? Orbits are on. I can't see any. Or oh, oh. There's no orbits. Inter interesting. All right. So the star itself. Um, okay. So San, San Solio, located in the purple nebula within the Andromeda galaxy. It is a rather remarkable star at first sight, but it and its system seem to defy the rules of the universe. Its main star of its system is rather dim and cool for its size. It is a dim lavender, the first of its, first of its kind. It has 14 planets. Excellent stuff. Okay. Cool. So first of the planets, we've got Coranda. Where is that? Coranda, the first planet. It's a little hard to navigate this one because I can't see the trails properly. There's no orbit trails. Um, we're going to have to search it. There it is. So where about... Oh, we're a bit... Oh, there's two stars. <laughs> right. Okay. So we're looking at the wrong star for a start. There's that. Because I was wondering why I said it was a purple star. Yeah, there it is. That's pretty cool then. Right. Here it is. Um, we'll go on studio, I think, for the lighting. There you go. So, the first planet. Its beautiful white atmosphere hides its rather hellish landscapes. Let's have a little look underneath that guy, actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, then we got Etica, a small, mineral-rich planet. This is going to be very difficult to navigate, I think. I'm going to have to look out all the names. Um, here it is. A small, mineral-rich planet. It's surf... Oh. Does anyone know how to stop the game auto changing the? Is it? Do I press this? That's really annoying when it when you zoom out and zoom in. How do you stop that? Because I thought I figured it out and then it's starting doing it again. If anyone knows, please let me know. Oh, it drives me mad <laughs> when you're filming, you're zooming in and out. Oh, it's so annoying. It's uh, it's one of the things I oh, I least like about the modern games that doing that without me telling it to. That's quite annoying. Um, Cool. All right. So, where are we? So this was um, Erector. So a small mineral rich planet. Its surface has more gold than the rest of the system combined, giving it a beautiful golden glow. Very nice. It's a very gold rich. Cool. Next up, we got Nox, the first gas giant. So that is here. Oh wow! Hello. Okay. Oh, please stay on studio mode. Oh, I can't take it any longer. It's so annoying. So, here it is. Um, its vibrant colours make the planet a stunning visual. It has one moon, Solon, a vibrant pink Earth-sized object. Its thin atmosphere catches the light reflecting off the surface, making it shine a dim pink. Nice. And we got our site over here. A small, desolate planet. It is believed to have suffered a large collision in the past, given its northern hemisphere a bright red colour. It is also tilted at 45 degrees. Good stuff. Okay. Cool. Then we've got uh, Robinus. A rather large planet. Its iron-rich surface gives it a metallic colour, and its thin atmosphere, mainly of water and oxygen, allows parts of the planet's surface to rust. Okay. Then we've got Alo. A vibrant green jewel-like planet with three thing Oh my god. Three ho oh. with three thing rings. Um oh, I've, uh, 
I've lost where I was. Uh, um, it has one moon, which has it has to um, it has no intelligent life. So there it is, looking good, very nice. Okay, then we got male moan mona, or may may la lamo lay may may lamo. The second of the Hattle Wills. It does not have intelligent life. Well, it does have city lights, though. It's hotter than Earth with max temperature of 130 degrees, meaning there aren't any ice caps. So that's still a very hot place to be here. It's got a probe around it. Well, there must be intelligent life if they've got a probe, then, surely. There you go. So there's that one. Next up, we've got Liber. Over here. I'm going to press play and pause. I just want to see if that orbits. Ah! That's better. That's what I was hoping. Yeah. Just to help navigate better. Oh, that's a very vibrant colour, isn't it? So. A stunning orangey yellow gas giant. It hosts largest rings in the system, stretching over 4 million kilometres. 4 million kilometres. So. Oh, yeah. Look, they're almost like J1407 there. Look at that. Talking about that earlier, weren't we? Um, it has three moons. Solo. Its first moon is very dark, almost black. With deep blue mountains. Um, Euro, like the currency... So Euro, that's the next one over here. Where is it? Yeah, uh, that one. Deep Blue Mountains, um, water moon with global ocean kilometers deep. So that's like a melted Europa. Pretty cool. And then it's like it's called Euro. Interesting. Um, Laura. It too has no intelligent life, but the planet location makes one of the Earth-like planets. Okay. It's got another probe around it. There it is. Looking good. Nice. Next up, we are moving to Yitter. Oh, there's a lot of planets in here, isn't there? Aha! Ooh, hello, look at the moon! Oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, that's, oh, we've got to get a surface view of this guy, surely. Let's have a little look around. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Look at the planet in the sky. Oh, yes. That looks good, doesn't it? Let's uh, do a manual control. Oh, that does look good, actually. Look at that. Go under the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Before and after. Aye. That's cool. Anyways, the reading. Um, That is not stable. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a, uh, there's quite a lot of stuff compacted in this system, isn't there? Um, purple and blue mixed gas shines. They are nice. Yeah, I agree. They are nice. I it's a I've made a gas shine that looks like that before. It's, it's quite nice. Next system, can you check out my system on the workshop? That's not how the process works, unfortunately. It is for the Discord members only, unfortunately. So, unfortunately, we'll have, we have to pass on that. Because otherwise, it's too it's too unorganized to choose who's first and who's second and things like that. So, that's why the Discord is a little easier. It's a proper queue. It's a proper queue system so we can do it properly and it's fair for everyone. So, anyways. Uh, where are we? So... Uh, yeah, so a Yitter, a moderate-sized gas giant with stunning blue bands and pink spot at its North Pole. It has one moon at Ethunal, which is among the hottest planets in the system. Its CO2 atmosphere, almost 10 times more massive than Venus, is calls it... Oh, 10 times more than Venus! And I think Venus is, what, 91 pressures of Earth? So that is a huge... So that's 910 pressures of Earth, then, if that's 10 times Venus. Um, causes the moon to boil at over a thousand degrees. It is so hot that it has oceans of liquid with aluminium, zinc, and other metals. Or aluminium, if you're American. Uh, so there's that. Cool. That's a nice combo. I like those two. That's a nice pair there. The pink. Yeah, that does look cool, doesn't it? I do like that. That's nice. Oh, there's the pink spot as well. Check that out. Cool. Nice little two there. Like that. Uh, next up, we're heading to Tascal here. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's got another. Hey, hello. It's a lot of uh, a lot of moons and moons and uh, oh hello. Oh, is it? oh wow. Okay. So these guys. What's the story here? A bluish red gas shine. It has two moons. Stray, a former dwarf planet captured by its gravity, explain its unusual orbit, and Sol, a super Earth with oceans of liquid sulfur dioxide. Sol itself has a moon mal which is Hasbul. It's tidally locked to Sol, and again, no intelligent life. So that's both these guys there. Cool. Very nice. Right, where are we heading next? So we next up went to Juno. About two times the mass of Earth. Here it is. Very nice. It's all alone, no, no moons. It is Hatipal with intelligent life, finally. The Solians, equivalent to humanity in 4000 BC. Okay, they're advancing faster than humans, though. Okay. 
Then we've got Ju Julieta, the smallest of the three stars. So we've got another star here. It's not even the largest object in the system, plus it's quite dense. It has three planets. So we've got a very hot gas giant here. So that's Ash. A hot super Neptune. It orbits, no moons. Then we've got Liqua. Li Lycaea. Another Earth-like world. Super Earth has intelligent life. Um, about 40 years behind humanity. It has one moon. Which is there. Closer than our moon as well. Then we have got this one. Lemine over here. A lemony lime colour gas giant. Which is where it gets its name. It has two moons. That's a huge moon there. Gas giant moon. And there's also a very nice looking rocky world here. Boney. Oh, I do like that. Oh, yeah. Look at the two-tone on that. That's a great looking planet. Or well, moon. It looks good, doesn't it? It matches its gas giant as well. What do you think of that? That's quite good, actually. How do you post this on the Discord? The chat's closed at the moment until the list is cleared. And that's the way we That's the way we roll. Because otherwise the list will just get too packed and it will just be impossible to get the list cleared. So we open the chat every few months, let people post. I clear the list and then um, we repeat basically but the rules do change um or regulations change just to keep things interesting um and just so people don't post simulations of like one or two objects in because we've had those before and we're like we just skip those nowadays because it's a bit silly dedicating a whole episode to that really so and it's just boring for the viewer really isn't it so yeah two-tone is a term on color in the atmosphere well yeah two-tone is um basically is done by this setting here the this the ray light scattering so it's this here look if you go to just zero for instance that's a one tone atmosphere there look, it's all the same color if you bend it left or right you can see it's a two tone color you got the main color then you got like a darker color on the twilight zone which is pretty cool so you get quite an interesting looking combo when you do that hassle moons are overrated please crash them into the planet already <laughs> there's a lot of them in here isn't there there is a lot <laughs> So, there we go. Underneath. That isn't so hassable, though. But it does look nice. I do like that. That's a, that's a good-looking moon. So, cool. That's Bone, isn't it? I like that. Cool. Uh, next up, we're heading to Curio. So, that is now onto the... Oh. So, we're heading over here. The first planet passed the Julieta system. It's a supermassive Earth that's covered in ice and has an ocean of liquid oxygen. It has no moons. So that's a pretty cold place to be. It's pretty far away from the stars as well. Okay. So now we're heading to the last of the stars. So this is the final star now. It is about two times the mass of the sun, three times the size, has eight planets. First of the planets. Uh, Salina, a deep red planet, has a thin atmosphere of sulfur and one moon, Apollo, which is a ice-coloured, uh, highs its extremely hot temperatures. Okay. Those ice-covered surface. So it's kind of like a highly pressured ice. Kind of reminds me of some of those planets that have really hot pressure where they can have ice that's burning because of the pressure. The ice can't melt. The atoms can't become a liquid. Um, Hyperion. Um, a binary system. Hyperion is a pedestrian white and... Uh, it's a oh, we've got a Neptune-coloured moon. Uh, oh, hello. So a lot of binary gas giants today. That's interesting that that theme's kind of spread across multiple systems. It's an interesting concept for sure, but it's pretty uh pretty mad. Are these planets default names? Uh, definitely not all of them. So where are we? Happy Easter! Happy Easter to you, Bunny Fan. Ah, look at the name, Bunny Fan. <laughs> Happy Easter! Hey. <laughs> cool I've got on the planet Curio before on my sims yeah that, that's that's a generated name definitely Hyperion I think is a generated name as well but not, some of these definitely aren't Idel these these names Idel Oropax they're generated they're, they're custom generated oh, they're, they're generated names I should say they're, they're spawnings um, Idel a huge rocky planet over 2.5 times the mass of Jupiter it's incredibly thick 2.5 Jupiter rocky <sighs> oh, that's a huge boy okay it's incredibly thick atmosphere allows liquid water on its surface despite its scorching temperatures. It has one moon, which is an orange Venus color moon. Okay, that's an interesting concept. Actually, check that. What do you think of that? That's pretty cool. There's the Venus, looking pretty good. Okay, have a look underneath that atmosphere. Actually, see what's going on there. Okay, so it's pretty, uh, pretty scorched looking underneath as well. Pretty cool. That's cool. All right. Um, next up, we're heading to Aura Packs. A deadly 
planet. Its thick atmosphere is made of ammonia and other toxic gases. That's no moons. That's a cool looking planet. I like that. Kind of reminds me of that green moon, but orange instead of green, actually. That's cool. I like that. Uh, next up, we've got Axum. Axum, over here. This one. A rather colourful gas giant with one moon, Arkham, which is also a gas giant. See, a lot of gas giant moons today. Very interesting. It's an interesting trend, because personally, I don't like giving gas giants gas giant moons. It doesn't match for me when I make my systems, but, you know, it's not really the way I uh, <laughs> make my systems. I mean, that that is huge as well. That's a massive moon there. Um, it's quite colourful. And next up, we've got a Fitanu over here. Oh, I like the colour on this one. Oh, no, again with the gas giant moon. It's an in, it's it's a very interesting feature that people do. Is that two of them? Oh my god, that's loads of them. This is a very weird system of the way this is formed. Over ten times mass due and three times its radius. In fact, it may have been a brand of wolf that called a long ago. It has seven moons, most of any planet. Its largest moon itself larger than Jupiter. See, I mean that's just madness. Um, it is over eleven times the mass of Earth. Um, okay. Oh wow, we so there's the moons. Oh, wow, we got Psy over here. I think there was a description on that one there. Um, Psy, a small moon with an ocean of liquid hydrogen. Cool. Next up, we've got um, K over here. A water world. There it is. Then we've got Zoa. Oh, where is that one? It's got Psy... Yule is a rather colourful moon. Zoa. There it is. Ice world with some frozen oceans. And lastly, Sal is a cool reddish moon. There it is. Cool. There you go. And next up, we've got a uh, Syria. Similar to Apollo, but bigger and less blue. A Syria. There you go. Oh, I quite like that. That looks nice. Composed entirely of helium. Cool. Next up, we have got Zan Zero, the first object of the outer system. It was once a planet of Devona, but was ejected from the system and now orbits. And so that's a that's, that's a nice two tone. Look, you can see that's a that's a two tone atmosphere. That looks pretty cool, actually. Look, yeah, I like that. That's nice. Cool. And then lastly, Mephitis, big jump out to the final one. A vibrant purple gas giant. Oh, yeah. Oh, hello. Okay. It's the second largest planet in the system and is the first in the star. It has four moons. Its first moon is also close. Its tidal forces heat the moon up, which is this one. Um, the tidal forces heat the moon to around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the latest object in the moon to have intelligent life, being around the year 2060, called the Cytons. Uh, next up, we have got uh, Ras... Grassy, grassy. It's an icy moon, large enough with massive ice flats. And then last, we got Eurite over here. It's a moon in radioactive materials. Find the last object in the system, and the object furthest from the star. Um, it's a very mysterious planet and a scary object. Its surface is a mixture of black and red, and its atmosphere too. It's five times the mass of Earth. Little is known about it. That's the Eurite, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there's one more planet. Okay. So that didn't really match up. So there, there's that. So the last planet's called... Saturnic... Where's that? That's not around here, is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's a far. It's really far out. There you go. There you go. Cool. Ah! Red and black. Five times massive earth. It was known about it. Cool. That's what it looks like underneath. There you go. So that's the San Solio system. Pretty cool. Cool. Purple is good for planet atmospheres. It is, yeah. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice mix. Cool. So, where are we heading next? Right. So we've got three more systems to do. I think it was. So next up, we've got one from Nick himself. Okay. One of our guys in the chat there. Cool. So, we've got one, two, three more to do. Please use the update prior to material update. Okay, so no, we're going to skip that, like we said earlier, actually. Yes, we did say that. So, I'm going to come back to that, and I'll film that next week. Okay, that's fine. 
Then we got one system from the user uh, Bo Dato B. Okay. So I need to come back to that other system there. Okay. Uh, let me just leave a note for myself. Uh, film next week. And myself. Cool. So we're going to get that done. So I'll do that later. Um, yeah. So Bodato B, next simulation. So this is called the Asolio system. Okay. Right. Let's get this loaded in the game. Workshop. Oh, yeah. And browse. Let's get that. Uh, get that back up. There it is. Quite a cool little picture to begin with there. Very nice. Right, there you go. Cool. Let's see what we got. So, like I said, this is from the user Bo Dato B in Discord. So, thank you to them for sending those in. Very nice. Looking good. Right. Let's have a look. Oh, I like the back. Oh, the background's nice, isn't it? Hey. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. Very bright and vibrant in here. I'm liking this. Right. Let's see. We've got a lot of purple. A lot of people like purple today. That's good stuff. Cool. All right. So. The star itself, or the solar system. 11 planets, some dwarfs, and a few asteroids and comets formed around 6.6 .6 billion years ago. If you cannot pronounce a planet's name, don't waste your time. <laughs> Someone's giving me permission. That's great. <laughs> cool. Right. First of the planets, Tyrondis. Oh, oh, I like that. Oh, look at that. That's a very nice deep. That's like a Mercury and a Europa texture, maybe, together? No, planet 15 in planet Europa. Very nice. Of moon Europa. That's a good looking one. I like that. That's a great design. I really like that. That's cool. What do you think of that? That looks good. Right. On the moons. So let's actually read the thing. <laughs> oh yeah. The star itself. So Soliel is the star of the system. It has 11. Oh yeah. We read that. Um, it has 3.3 to 4 billion years left of its life. Right. The start. The first planet. Tauridis, the first planet. It's the smallest planet and it's very, very hot. It has one moon called Bernalt, which is there. It has one satellite in orbit of it. Uh, it contains unknown gems on the surface. That is a great looking world as well. Look at that. Looks pretty hellish. That, um, it contains unknown gems on its surface that glow in the dark. Any city lights I can see? Doesn't look like it. You could say that it's worth more than $5 million. Okay, that's expensive materials on there then. Okay, there's some like little probe thing there. What's that? Yeah, it's a probe. Okay, cool. Next up, we got this one here. Lass, the second planet. Hottest planet in the entire system. It serves as a mixture of hot rocks and lava. Let's have a drink there. <laughs> All this talking. Need a drink after a while. <laughs> right. Um, it's the hottest planet entire system and its surface is a mixture of hot rocks and lava. This planet contains so much CO2 in its atmosphere that it will continue to get hotter, reaching about 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit in the, par uh, in the past. Um, it was a hotter world with life living on its surface. As you can see, something clearly went wrong. Now last will forever be the hottest and most uninhabitable world. So probably formerly like a Venus world. We've got a lot of greenhouse gases going on in there. So then we've got a Plolax over here. It's the third planet. It is around the same size as Tyrondis, and they have both have the same characteristics. Heavily cratered and small. Plolax is a very dusty planet with a dusty atmosphere. and has a bit of water that is boiling hot, and it will evaporate in about 15 or less days. Besides that, it's just a barren world waiting for something interesting to happen. Okay. Very, very interesting. Cool. All right. Moving on. So we've got S-Trade next. It's the fourth planet. There it is. A. Hey. Cool. It's a fourth planet. It's a habitable world where life forms called the Styx. The Styx aren't as advanced as us humans. They are only just learn how to build satellites and send them into space. It is the biggest rocky planet of the system. It has one moon named AP, a white moon with mysterious blue craters. AP will eventually spiral into asteroid in the future and will end all life over the planet. But sadly, the Styx don't know that yet. Okay. There's AP. So there's a lot of probes around it, as you can see. And then the moon itself here. Okay, see the little blue craters as well. 
Very nice. Alright, next up we've got no Noxus. Noxus. The fifth of the planets over here. Looking good. It's the fifth planet. This planet is basically the opposite of Lus. Um, they are around the same size, but one is Hasbro while the other isn't. Noxus has life forms called the Noxians. Noxians have only sent one satellite to Estrade, which they... Because they aren't as advanced. They do not know about water, though. It is a has a purple sky, which causes the plants to be red in colour. It also has one main one named Rock Rot. Uh, rock Rot. Other than that, Noxus is just another Hasbro world. It's very ocean heavy as well. Let's get a little look underneath here. Okay. Oh, hello. Nice view of the star there. We wanted more surface views, didn't we? So there you go. It's weird how the stars like black fade out when you look behind atmospheres. That's really weird, that is. It's only done it in, it's only done it in recent versions of the game. There you go. How are we doing in the chat? Love the colours in this one too. The first planets are very desert and hellish looking. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? Cool. All right. Right, next up, we are heading to um, Fobelt and Avermy over here. Okay. First of the dwarf planets. Oh, they're very. So again, with the binaries, they're very close binaries. It's a very popular trend, isn't it? Um, they orbit a very center, a bit closer than Fobelt. In the early days, it captured the other one, which is why they're like this. Both dwarfs contain special minerals that glow in the night. Okay. Next up, we've got Ionia. What's that math 24? I want to see that in a minute. Right, Ionia. Tilted on its side like Uranus. Okay. It's a sixth planet. It has a brownish red giant that tilts... Oh, it's a brownish red gas giant that's tilted on its side because of a collision with a super Earth. It has 31 moons, including the four major ones. One of the moons, Groy, is the biggest moon in the entire system. It has an underground methane sea just like Titan. The other moons are just small moons and asteroids. So Groy. Where is Groy? There he is. There's your Titan equivalent, looking good. Very nice, quite like that. What do you think of that? Cool, looks good. Okay, and the rest of the moons, there's 31 of them, so we'll try and get through, well, these are the major moons anyway, so they all are there. Cool. Right, now, before we go to the next one, so that's Leon. Math, what is this? Also named after the channel's original name. Remember, this before Neptunian guy, the channel was called the Math Bros. So, that's pretty cool. What do you think of that? Hey, named after the original name. That's cool. Very nice. Okay, next up, we have got Leon, which is there. That nice yellow gas giant. The seventh planet is a yellow gas giant that is just a bit smaller than Ionia. It has 46 moons, including the two major ones shown. The moon Loma, Loma is the second biggest moon in the system. Leon has not been explored yet, so not much is really known about it, other than it's only getting closer to the next planet. So there it is there. Looking good. Then we've got Paratut over here. Cool. Very nice. I tell you what, all this talking, my voice is really getting, um, oh, <laughs> my voice is burning, because my throat is starting to hurt all this talk. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. It's quite hot where I'm sitting as well, so that probably doesn't help. <laughs> right, um, next up we are going to Actreion, another gas giant, looking good. It's the eighth planet and the biggest planet. It is also a yellow gas giant, but right now something strange is happening. This causes the clouds to be more green. The reason for this phenomenon is currently unknown which is why Styx sent a satellite to study these atoms and take pictures. It has 65 moons, including the three major ones. This planet is also having an influence on Dion, pulling it closer on each every encounter. Okay, so the moons, there's the major ones. Looking good. Right, next up we are heading to Kuna. Over here. The ninth planet. It's the first ice giant. Kuna is a beautiful blue ice giant with 11 moons. It has the biggest rings in the entire system and is formed by a small icy moon. These rings will disappear in 100,000 years since the temperature will rise. There you go. Looking good. It's got one moon. Uh, Tropic Tropicania. Nika. Cool. Next up, we are heading to Ozion. The 
the 10th planet. It is also an ice giant. It has rings. About two million years ago, it collided with a super earth causing it to rotate the opposite way. So there's like a Uranus link. It causes a dark strip cloud to form on the planet. This dark strip will disappear in about 50 to 70 years. It has nine moons, including the one shown, which is there. That's quite an interesting concept. It's just have the important one shown and have the other ones hidden. I quite like that. Saves the time of the creator putting the sims in there. What's AL and MP? What are those? Interesting. Next up, we've got Logate. Over here. Here we go. So, Logate. Another dwarf planet. It's pretty small and boring. Another dwarf planet, MP. Oh, that's what they're called. Okay, so those are other dwarf planets. It's located in the same area. These are the only two dwarfs in this area. Both of these are very dark and they have not been discovered yet. Okay. Electo. Another dwarf planet. It's almost as big as Pollux and Taurus, if not bigger. It's very icy and has an active atmosphere that switches on and off. Cool. Um... But the Noxians say it isn't. Me, Percy, I would consider it a planet. What do you think? Uh, this guy, zero point, it's, yeah, the mass is low, but the radius is big enough to be a planet. I mean, it's 0.499 Earths. I mean, radius of Earth is quite small. Like Mars, moon, three Mars. I mean, yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably give that a moon pass for a planet. I mean, yeah. 0 0.499, that's big enough. That's bigger than, I mean, if we compare it to our planets. Size-wise, it's got you covered. It's bigger than Mercury. Huh. Yeah, that's definitely a planet. What do you guys think? It's got to be. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But yeah, inter interesting stuff um, nonetheless, though. Cool. All right. So, moving on. There's that one. Next up, I'm going to Jeddo. So, a massive jump out to this guy, then. Very dark, as we can see. It's the last planet. It is the smallest gas giant. It is far out and has a very eccentric orbit because it has been ejected by uh, Acheron. The planet has not been discovered. It will probably be quite hard to if it's not got any uh, light. Cool. We've got the moons. And then we've got these, these guys here. But if we look down the bottom, it says the other system, uh, Proly, is free for you to explore. Heads up, it isn't really decorated, which is why I didn't take time on it. But you can take a quick look. Yeah, we'll have a quick peek. So that's the whole description done for this system. So there's another system in here somewhere. Ah, the binary. Okay, so this is the other system. We'll have a quick little glance through of all the planets. There's not too many. So the star, got the first of the planets here. But he's saying they're not customised. So we'll have a quick little, do the little glance of them there. That one's pretty hot. C, E, it's a gas giant there. We've got F, G. That's all on there. There we go. So there's that system done. So that's another one ticked off the list. Very nice. Looking good. Right. Great stuff there. And then moving on to the final of the list that needs clearing. Other than the one I had to skip because of it, it needs to be done in an old version of the game. That has cleared us through the whole list of the submitted systems. So, very good. So now we're moving on to the final system of the day. Which is the Olveria Diana system. This one has a lot of reading by the looks of it. So I've got a big big book worth of stuff to read as we finish up so here we go right let's load it up I think let's go here can't we yep it's that system there by the user uh, crack uh, crack 78 thank you for sending your system in so it's that, that install uh, how are we doing in the chat uh, what's going on here um, Neptune guy why creating the galaxy video got deleted uh, what what video is that? Um, uh, creating a galaxy. I'm not. What 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 video is that? I don't know which one that is. There's there's very low. There's a very low amount of videos I've deleted over the years. Only the ones with bad audio are the ones I well, I unlisted them. They're not deleted, but they are unlisted. Um, and I remade them. Um, yeah, there's there shouldn't be any videos deleted. Cool. Um, all right. So, the final system. So, where, where are we? So, it is the. What's it? It's called the Olivia Diona system. Oh, hello. Oh, there it is. All right. Let's see what we got. 
Will you do Chama memberships? I haven't really thought that far, if I'm honest. Because I'm not really sure what I have to offer, really. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't want to, like, just charge people for nothing. You know, that's a bit out, isn't it? It's like, that's a bit out of order. Um, I, I, I don't know what I would, what I'd really do for that. I don't really have enough sort of time to really go into that sort of stuff, really. I mean, I, I, I'm not really sure what I would do for it. So, because obviously, your time is quite limited with, with um, my video creation. But, you know, I, I haven't really got any ideas what I could really do with it, if, I, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, right, anyways, so, this system's actually playing. Look, I'm going to pause it. Um... Salutations and welcome to the Overia Derna system, a double star system located in 23,100 light years from our star. The origins of this system are unknown and highly speculated, sitting in the very hygiene poor region of the Milky Way. Next. Oh, oh my god, whoa. What the heck? That's the moon and the earth, okay. That's our solar system. So we're taking, what, a big jump, are we? Okay, alright, okay. So... A few things to note before going through. The system is playable, everything's stable and concrete, so feel free to run the simulation. I like that. We always like simulations that can run. That's cool. Um, all minor objects, asteroids, comets, tiny moons, are labeled with either a red or blue trail. Red trailed objects are rocky bodies, blue trailed bodies are icy bodies. Purple trailed bodies are composed of rock and ice, effectively. Okay, they're the rarest in the entire system, only two of them exist. There's a bug with the Diona star, with a light shining from it when you first click in its normal starlight to get the actual star's colour I designed. Just go to the outer protosphere and the visual section and tap on it like you're going to change it. Okay. And back out of the menu. I'll fix issue, apologies, inconvenience. With those disclaimers, uh, enjoy. Alright, so primary, the main star. So we're going all the way over here now. Oh, wow. Okay, right. Oh my god. Look at all this. It's a load of stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, very, oh my god, this is huge! Look at this! My voice is killing me. <laughs> I've completely busted it. <laughs> right. I quite like how he's done it in segments. That's quite cool, actually, with a different um, different thing there. That's pretty cool. I quite like that. He's put it in like a guide, almost. So, V-type main sequence star. There he is. Terrestrial planets. Oh, this is pretty cool. I like that. So first are the Rockies. The closest planet to uh, um, of, uh, much like Venus, it's scorching at the surface, though it looks inviting with its darkish pink atmosphere. That's a nice looking world. Again, with the purple background. Interesting. A lot of purple today. Cool. There it is. Next up, we have got Solcar. Beaten up brutally by asteroids and other rocky bodies. It resembles Mercury with five times the matter. There it is. Oh, it's pretty bashed, isn't it? There you go. Uh, Plesiari. A tropical world bloom with very dense, lush rainforests all across the surface, home to alien life known as the Phidians. It has two moons. Looking good. That's a nice looking world. I like that. That's a nice looking world, isn't it? Underneath. There you go. Looking good. Very nice. There's the moons. Small little red one there. And then the second moon, Matora. There you go. Looking good. Very nice. Rai Alpha. Over here. Another Earth one. Cheshire world mimicking Earth in many categories, like its closest sibling. Um, it has two alien life known as the um, Colosseans. It has one moon, Farina. Interesting. Okay. Uh, next up, we got Camera and Tynri. Tynri? Tynri? Oh, oh, I'm getting hard to navigate it. That one, isn't it? Over here. All the red trails. They're all colour-coded between... Uh... Yeah, he said at the beginning, didn't he, what they were. Ah, some was ice and the other ones were... Um... Ah, I can't remember what it was. A binary system of two terrestrial worlds. Not much is known about why they orbit each other. But we do know that um, this is the dominant partner by a landslide. It also has a small ring. The duo supports several minor moons. Okay. Cool. Believed to be captured. Right, next up, on to the gaseous planets. Okay. So the red and blue, the red, blue, and purple are all asteroids. So that we won't be visiting like all of those. So we've got Resta, which is somewhere. So this is the gas giant. Cool. Oh, that's a nice one. First of the six gas giants, he sports an assortment of orange, green, yellow, aqua, and red bands in many shades. Though believed to be roughly half of the mass of Jupiter, Resta contains three major moons. 
and several minor moons. So the major moons will go to all of those there. Get them all up. So one, two, and three. Cool. Next up, we are heading to Manax, which is this purple one. The almost twice the size of Jupiter, Manax influences her region by space massively. While not very interesting moon-wise, its bands are one to both us and alien species of the system. It has two major moons, Jupiter and Mare. There's Jupiter and Mare over here. There you go. Nice. Next up, we've got Sango over here, making good progress. Isn't very prickly of anything though. Its north and south hemispheres are split between green and blue shades. Sango has two major moons, June and Mardi, and a few minor moons. Cool. There they are. There, looking great. Very nice. Okay, next up we got Or Irom. Cool. This really puts in perspective how long I've been a viewer. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I guess so, Centurion. Yeah, I mean. Done a lot of episodes. I can't. When was it? I can't even remember when episode one was. I'm sure it was 2017. But it's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a long, long time. I found a channel for episode 177. Oh, so long ago. Because we did a stream at 200, uh, and we did a 250. Did we do it 250? I think we did. Definitely did it at 200. Maybe even 100 as well. Oh, are we lagging? Are we? We got a bit of lag. Are we okay? I think we know. I think we're all right, aren't we? I'm just rotating the screen. I'm watching it myself, so I can just see everything that's going on. Um, are we? Are we? Are we good? Is it going to spin? <laughs> I, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Yeah. The stream's fine. Um, okay. So then we've got the moons as well. Let's have a look at the moons. Uranus, like well tilted on its side, though unlike its gaseous brothers and sisters, it doesn't have any coloured bands. So it's a bland Uranus, a white version of Uranus. There you go. Tilt on its side. So we've seen quite a lot of similar theming. We've got we've had tilted planets, we've had binary rockies, we've had binary gases, we've had gas giant moons. There's been a very big trend in a lot of these systems today. It's very interesting. All made from different people. But it's, it's it's very interesting. There you go. Cool. Nice. Next up we are heading to uh Termar Termin, which is here. This one's pretty exotic. Not much known is about this ice shot, I mean it's weirdly placed colours. That's a very strange colour. Yeah, that is a very, very bizarre looking world. It's got a few moons as well. Have a look at those guys there. We'll quickly go through all those as well. That's quite an interesting one. Cool. Next up, we have got Marina. Which is, where's that? Over here. One of the last objects to believe to be found. Marina is believed to be a failed brown dwarf coming at a massive 9.67 times the mass of Jupiter. It has the largest rings in the entire solar system. has one major moon, Licto. It's a gaseous moon of its own moon system. Cool. You see it over here. Picks up a few asteroids on its own. There he is. Another gas giant moon. We can see the trend continues. We've seen it in like all the systems today. That's so strange. Very, very interesting. Okay. Cool. That is strange. Right. Moving on. Dwarf planets. So there's the full list there. So that's all of these guys, isn't it? Trying to go from all there. Try and click on them all. Oh. There's the dwarfs there. Okay, I try and click on most of them. But they're all dwarfs, aren't they? So, or ran. All right, okay. Cool. Yeah, so they're all the dwarf, all the dwarf plants are there. Ah, it's a little weird to navigate with ring systems. Try and get on that one there. There it is. Cool. But yeah, we'll, we'll move on. Secondary partner star. So we're now heading to uh, this one, Diona. It's a purple star. Another purple star as well. Very interesting. So... Diana, 0.8 soul masses. So a V-type main sequence star. No one is sure why its star goes purple. Terrestrial planets. So we've got the first one here. Bertulka. A moderately sized rocky world closely orbiting Diana, bathed in Diana a mysterious purple glow. It looks others worldly. Um next up we got Fur Atti over here. Cool. That's pretty cool, actually. I like that. Enormous terrestrial world, great oceans of water span the planet's surface like Earth, although life isn't suspected to be present here. It is also heavily tilted. It has two moons. They're back Paran. So there's Paran there. Oh, I like that. Let's check that out. That's a good looking world. What do you think of that? I like that. That looks good, doesn't it? What do you think of that? I like that. That's a cool looking one. Nice. Uh, next up, we are heading to uh, Silita. Over here. 
An unnoteworthy iPhone around the size of Zolkar. It has two moons. Cool. Alright. Nice. Ice Giants. Gurity. Over here. Got another very exotic one. Look at the bands on that. Due to the purple glow from down there, not much can be seen from the planet's bands, although it has a small ring. It has a single major moon, Tolala, and a, a Torala, and a few minor moons. So there's the major moon. Cool. Uh, Volvert, the crown of the Diana system. That's this guy here. Ooh, looking interesting. Okay. Oh, it's got a ring system as well. Cool. Very nice. Um, the crown of the Diana system, all is known, is a red in the northern hemisphere and all blue in the southern hemisphere. Scientists speculate this is caused by Diana's purple light affecting... The Raja fragile coloration of the planet, splitting the purple light into two secular, so two color components. Volva also carries a massive double ring system, which can be seen from the naked eye from the terrestrial worlds. Cool. There you go. You got the little moon in there as well. Looking cool. Making it a spectacle with a double star system. It has a single major moon in the process of forming due to the rings. Cool. Dwarf planets. So again, we've got all the dwarf planets in there, but we won't visit all of those because we'll be here for quite a while. But um. Get a quick look at them there. So they're all, they're all little minor ones, aren't they? Look, you can see there. Okay, I try and click on most of them though, so there you go. There you go, that's a minor majority of them. There we go. Next, Journey Sai. So where is that? Is that here? Uh, ah. So you can see there's an orc cloud in this system as well. That's pretty cool. That's a probe, isn't it? Uh, it's quite hard to click on the small things. There we go. It's like how Voyager 1 and 2 satellites sent out to explore the outer solar system beyond. Signals and messages are still received by the alien species to this day. Nice. We've reached the end. This took a while to make. I hope it was enjoyable. Thanks for viewing. Oh, that's good. That's good. I enjoyed that. But I like the structure. The design of this one is pretty cool. I like the Oort cloud. It's got the other little system with its own little Oort cloud in there as well. Or its own little... Yeah, that, that's quite cool. I like that. What do you guys think of that? That's pretty cool. Sweet. That's good stuff there. And that brings us to the end of the submission list. That's everything. Uh, apart from the one I need to do in an older version of the game for Nick, that is the whole list cleared. So what do you guys think of that? That's pretty good. I hope you guys have enjoyed this stream. I mean, what do you, what do you think of that? Let's have a little chat before we finish up. But um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I did enjoy that. So what do you guys uh what do you think what was the best sort of system we've seen out of all these i mean it's quite an interest. i think we've had quite an interesting lineup we've had a lot of a lot of color theming of purple today purple atmospheres binary planets with massive masses binary gas giants gas giant moons i mean that's crazy it's pretty cool but yeah let us know what you uh let us know what you think yeah that's pretty cool Video ideas for memberships. I mean, yeah, if you got, I, I don't know what I would do for a membership, really. I mean, yeah, I mean, it'd be a, quite a lot to uh, charge people just to do simple things, really. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do that. Um, have a good day, Neptune. I need to sleep now because Australia is 3.45 a.m. Yeah, have a good one, Golden. Appreciate you tuning in, man. Really do. That's awesome. Take care. Have a good night. Yeah, take care. This recent one is the best one by far. Ah, so you like this one the most? Interesting, okay. Cool. So the most popular system out of the ones we've done was this then, for some of you guys. Nice purple back. It's cool. It's, it's a really cool structured system. You know, the way it's built, orbits, obviously the colour coordination between different colours mean different things. It's, it's a cool design. And it runs. Remember, this guy said it runs. So you can act, this system is all, all stable. Let's see how fast we can spin it. Let's just delete the rings because that will help it actually run properly. Make it less laggy as well. But, you know, this system fully runs, he said. So it can all... It's very slow. Or something got ejected there. But, yeah, he said the system could run. So pretty cool. But there it is. Very nice. How many subscribers did you have when you made your Discord server? Um, I'm expecting... I'm guessing not many. Honestly. I, um, It couldn't have been more than a thousand if that... I started it in seventeen, uh, in twenty seventeen, uh, seventeen or eighteen. So it's only about a thousand subscribers at that point. Um, but yeah, it's been a been a long time now. I mean, it's the, the the Discord server has probably about half the amount of subscribers I had when I made the made the Discord server at this point. Um, yeah, 
that's pretty cool. Any more any more questions, guys? Or we all, we might do, we'll do a little quick Q and A at the end, I guess. Um, if you guys got any more questions before we uh, finish up the stream for today. But yeah, let, let's see. Uh, what do you what do you think of that? How did you guys find this? I thought it was pretty cool. It's nice to obviously chat with you guys as well. Try uploading the short. I've done shorts before. Um, you, if you look on the shorts, I haven't done one for a while. Um, but yeah, there is there is some shorts. We do collision shorts. They're always quite cool, actually. And actually, while I'm talking to you guys, you get a little tease of what's to come this week. So I've obviously filmed episode 301 already of this series. So I'll film 302 next weekend. But stay tuned for another little uh, blast from the past this coming week. It should come out on Tuesday, I think. Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. Space Engine content. Yeah, we can return to Space Engine at some point. See, the reason with Space Engine is I find it's a bit repetitive. and it's it, The videos have never been as popular as the Sandbox ones. So I've always stuck with sandbox more. Sandbox is more because you can do more. Sand, you can do more in sandbox. There's a little more sort of communication with, the, with like with you guys watching. You know, you can interact with everyone better with sandbox. But Space Engine is more of just a exploration game, really. So it's a little harder to sort of have good like in, involve you guys in it more. Obviously, sandbox and you can have custom Space Engine, but not many people do it. So it's a lot more interesting to do it with um universe sandbox really but yeah we can we can definitely hop back to space engine really i mean it'd be good um for sure there really it's good though yeah space engine is a good game it's nothing against space engine it's a great game and simulator but it's um f for me personally in, in this channel sandbox has always been the best contender and always done has always done the best really with that but yeah i think anyways with that all said and done guys i think we'll finish off the stream now so thank you very much for tuning in it's been a great pleasure talking to you i really hope you've enjoyed it um and yeah that all said and done stay tuned also you have two videos coming out later this week make sure you have a great rest of your day guys happy easter for everyone who celebrates it and yeah i'll catch you in the next video goodbye everyone take care thanks again for tuning in really do appreciate it